In computational complexity, we typically count algorithms that run in a polynomial number of steps as efficient, even though this doesn't necessarily match up with efficiency in practice. For example, a polynomial like n to the 100, or even 1 billion times n squared, can hardly be seen as efficient. But it turns out that the distinction between polynomial and exponential is incredibly useful in practice essentially because polynomials don't grow that badly as n grows. A linear polynomial, scalar multiple of n, grows linearly, where we use the geometric analogy here of a line. n squared grows like a square, n cubed grows like a cube, and in all of these cases we could easily draw the geometric figure corresponding to the growth rate. But exponentials explode. If you put one grain of rice on the first square of a chessboard, and then on every subsequent square you double the number of grains of rice, this may seem like an innocuous task. But by the time you get to the third row of the chessboard, you'll have a million grains of rice. By the time you get to the fourth row, you'll have a billion. And by the time you get to the end of the chessboard, you will have 18 quintillion grains of rice. You might also wonder, what happens when computers get faster every year? Can't we solve bigger problems then? It turns out that the growth rate, exponential or polynomial, affects this as well. Say you can do t steps in a week on your current computer. According to Moore's law, next year this will essentially be 2 times t. Moore's law may be ending, but let's pretend that it's going to go on forever. If you have a problem whose running time is big O of n squared, so some constant times n squared, then doubling t, i.e. what your computer will be able to do next year, multiplies the size of the problem you can solve by the square root of 2, or around 1.4. This means that simply by waiting for computers to get faster, you could solve a problem that is 40% larger than the problem you could solve today. But if the running time is exponential, a constant times 2 to the n, doubling t changes n to n plus 1. You can solve problems that are one bigger next year than you could this year. And this has real implications. So let's plot some polynomials, 2 to the n, and n factorial on a log plot. The y-axis here is the logarithm of the number of microseconds that it takes for an algorithm to run. If you have an algorithm that runs in time n or n squared or n cubed, you see that you get very similar looking lines here. And by the time n is 90 or 100, you can still solve these problems in under a minute. But for a problem that takes 2 to the n time, by the time you have inputs of size 25 or so, you've surpassed a minute. By the time you get up to inputs of size 80, the amount of time it takes for this algorithm to finish is larger than the age of the universe. And for n factorial, this is even worse. The age of the universe is reached by n factorial when n is only around 20. So for exponential algorithms, or worse, there really is a sense in which they are effectively impossible to use on inputs of any reasonably large size. Note also that because this is a log plot, if we talk about something that's big O of n cubed, that means it's at most c times n cubed, that simply shifts the n cubed curve up by a constant factor, but doesn't change its shape. Whereas for 2 to the n, even if you shift it down by a constant, all this will do is shift up by a constant the size of the input it takes before you reach the age of the universe, but only by a constant. In practice, it turns out that once you have a polynomial time algorithm, the constants often come down soon thereafter, turning it into an actually effective algorithm.